after I made that sushi platter, I decided that I also wanted to make a couple of serving platters for like burgers and fries or charcuterie or whatever. So basically it's just like a cutting board, right? So you start out by cutting a bunch of strips of various different woods into strips and then gluing those all together as you see me doing here. And I know a lot of people like to use a uh, paintbrush for spreading glue, but I, I think that the best glue spreader in the world is your finger. Um, so that's what I tend to do. I know it's messy, but you can feel what's going on a little better and you can tell where it's light and heavy and, and all of that. So I just think it works better than trying to find a credit card or a paintbrush or whatever. So this is the method I use. And then you get your glue spread, you put it in the clamps, clamp it down and then let that sit overnight and dry. And I didn't like the way the squeeze out was on that one so I took it back out and then re-glued it, re-clamped it. And then once I had it out of the clamps, I could run it through the planer. And then once I had both sides planed down to where they were nice and flat and level, I could take it over to the table saw and trim the ends off. to the workbench and run a little round over bit around the edges just to take that sharp edge off. I don't have a router table so this was just a lot of clamping it to the bench and then running my router around one half of it, turn it around in the clamp because the clamp's in the way to do all four sides, right? And then do the other side flip it over, repeat the process. It's tedious, but it works. And then do a little bit of sanding on it.
then I wanted to route a channel in the ends of it that would act as a handle, so I took the workmate and clamped it in there, set up a couple stops so that my router would only go so far, and then just route a groove in the end of the board that would act as a handle to pick it up with when it's laying flat on the table. And then I used the same process by clamping the, the board to the workmate again, and then setting a, a couple stops up and then using an edge guide on the router to route a juice groove on one edge and then turn it around and repeat that process on the other four edges to give this juice groove that you see here. Again, super tedious process without a router table, but it does show that it can be done with limited tools by just clamping it to a workbench, setting up a couple stops, and then running your router from stop to stop. And then back to the sand. random orbital sander and go over the whole thing again. Now for the other side, I wanted to make this a two-sided serving uh, platter. So the one side has the juice groove on it for like if you're doing a steak or something like that. This side I wanted to cut a recess for this bowl so that I could do like a burger and fries and then have a bowl for a dipping sauce or something like that. So what I did was laid out the blue tape, set the bowl on there where I wanted it, marked around it, and then this is a method that I learned. I, I watch um, Chris over at King Bespoke Creations quite a bit. He's an amazing wood carver, and I'll leave a link to his channel down below. And I've learned quite a bit just from watching him about just how to approach this. So the first thing is to just take a razor knife, hold it real low angle, and run it around the mark that you made. And then here you see me honing up some, some chisels. Um, I am not the greatest wood carver in the world. And these are the Harbor Freight mini wood carving chisel set. And they are not great chisels. Um, but then, you know, you, you just kind of start whacking at it. Um, using the razor knife to carve around that, that line that I drew. And then using the chisel to basically chisel up to that line is something that, like I said, I learned that from Chris over at King Bespoke, and it works really well. Um, you see me whacking on it with a mallet here. This is one of the, that mallet is actually one of the first things that I ever would turned um, that was an actual project, and it was way before I started doing YouTube, so uh, there's no video of that, but uh, it's one of the first actual projects I ever made, so, and this was my intention, was to use it as a wood carving mallet um, for whacking chisels. And it works pretty well. Um, it's probably not the hardest wood and it's got dents in it already from the chisel handles, but whatever, I don't care. I'm pretty happy with the way it performed. So I went around um, where I had run the razor knife around it to mark that edge. I took the chisel and went around that same spot to make that, that cut deeper. And then I started trying to chisel it all out and I gave up on that and just stuck the plunge router in it and started uh, routing away at it. You know, Chris over at King Bespoke would carve this whole thing out by hand and he would do absolutely amazing, but uh, I reach for the router when I can. And this was extremely difficult for me because it's very hard to see what's going on in there. I don't have a dust collector hose that will attach to this router in any way. So trying to set up a light where I could still see in there with the router plunged down, the window to look in there is really super small. And there's a lot of wood chips building up in there too. So every now and then I'm trying to blow them out of there so that I can still see what I'm doing. Position the router so that the light's still shining in there so that I can see where my line was and not go over the line with the router. Freehand routing is not something I would recommend. Um, I, I'm still a pretty novice woodworker and I this was risky to say the least. But in the end, I got where I wanted to be with it and then go back to the chisels to just square up that edge because the router bit that I was using is a bullnose router bit so it left that edge of the bottom of the recess rounded up to the side and that's not what I wanted I needed it to be nice and square so back with the chisels to just kind of square up around that edge
and then keep fitting the bowl, keep working on it until you get it to fit. And I would say if you're interested in doing wood carving or something like this, don't be afraid of it. Um, you know, just just go at it. You, you might make a couple mistakes. I know I did. It's not the greatest job ever. It's certainly not um, production quality, but whatever. It's for me and my wife, and I'm, I'm pretty happy with the way it turned out. But I would encourage you to uh, try this out if you're at all interested in it because it is kind of fun. And just keep checking that bowl and looking for where it needs to be widened out a little bit more. Still working on it. Keep checking. had a little bit of cleanup left to do but I think it was pretty good so from there clean it all up and it's all about the sanding so what I did here was I chucked up a two inch sanding disc in my drill and then held my dust collector in my other hand and just started sanding on the bottom of that and then run the random orbital sander over the top of it to try to take the burr off of that edge around that recess and just keep working back and forth between these two items to get this thing sanded out. And then from there we can move on to finishing. So clean it all off with denatured alcohol to get all the sanding dust off of it. And you also get a sneak preview of what the finished wood's going to look like. Kind of pretty. And you guys know I love Odie's oil. So we're going to finish this one in Odie's oil just because I wanted a food safe finish. Um, like I said, I'm going to set a burger and fries on this someday. So. Um, or maybe a charcuterie plate or some, you know, uh, cheese and fruit. And uh, I wanted a food safe finish. And Odie's oil works great for this, so that's what I'm going to go with. And then we'll let that finish dry and we'll have us a couple serving platters. So if you guys are new here, uh, maybe con consider subscribing and um, hit that notification bell so you know when the next video is coming. And if you guys enjoyed this project, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and we'll see you in the next video. Thanks a lot.